Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, September the 2nd, 2024, and Tuesday, September the 3rd. Now, it's interesting. On Labor Day, I looked and it said Young and the Restless was not airing. I even checked. But for some reason, today, we've got yesterday and today's episode. So I'm going to do them both. Okay. I'm just going to be quick, y'all, because y'all have nothing. Oh, my God. Uh, Victor runs into Nate, or Nate runs into Victor at society, and Victor makes him sit down. Now, you want to know what's ludicrous? Ludicrous to me. Nate, have a seat. Why, Victor, no, I'm just picking up some takeout. I'm not staying. Have a seat. Oh, and then you sit down. Does Nate work for Victor? No. So therefore, he does not take orders from Victor Newman, nor would I ever have let that man think that I did. So Victor's trying to question, you know, didn't I tell you a couple months ago to convince Lily to, you know, go work at Winters with the family. And he goes, uh, Victor, nobody convinces Lily of anything. Lily has her own mind and she's more than capable of making up her own mind. He goes, well, I know Devon didn't want her at Chancellor's. And he goes, and Devon also knows. Lily makes up her own mind. She knows the door is open and nobody can force her to do anything, but it won't hurt you to talk to Lily again about it. And Nate, he says, no, I'm not going to do that, Victor. L Lily has already been talked to. She knows the door is open. She knows we're her family and we're there for her. That's all she blows. I mean, that's it. And then Victor had the nerve to get nasty. Don't think. I don't know. No, he goes, that's it. And you know what, Victor? I really need to go. Nate stands up. He goes, I'm not done talking to you. Sit back down. I would have been like, who are you talking to, Victor? I'm not one of your kids. I entertained you five minutes ago, but I'm not entertaining you again. And that stupid Nate sat back down. I said, see, uh-uh, no, no, right? Nate, Victor had the nerve to say, you know, I know exactly who you are. I know what you tried to do to me. And Nate says, oh, we're not even going to go back there. He says, I have done way too much for your family, Victor, for you to even think about saying what you're saying. He goes, and you and I both know how that went down. And how it really went down is Victor was playing Nate and Victor was playing his kids. He was playing them all. And in my opinion, Nate was honestly, because Victor was really acting all out of his mind when he was with Nate and Nate was protecting Victor and Victor turned on him like, like the price wasn't right, okay? <laughs> I mean, I was like, whoa, and felt justified doing it. So Nate honestly shouldn't even have any civil words for Victor because it was a lie with what Victor did it was a lie so anyway after he tries to tell Nate off and you know and Nate says you know well we both know that's not how that went and you know what now Victor I do this I, I do have to go and Nate gets up and he walks away and I'm thinking no you sat there way too long anyway now Nikki and uh Lily she did bring her one of Catherine's cards and one of her letters that she wrote. And she, of course, brought a letter that mentioned Neo and Lily and the twins because they had run into each other at Crimson Lights after the twins uh, had a 
good pediatric checkup. And Lily almost started crying because she goes, I remember that day. I remember. Because, you know, Catherine loved Lily's kids. I mean, they loved Kane. She and Jill loved Kane. And those were Kane's kids. So um, she's like, yeah, Catherine meant so much to me and blah, blah, blah. And so Nikki was probing, but really couldn't get, Lily didn't give up the goods on her. Billy fired her or anything. So then Billy shows up and he tells, uh, what did he say? He goes, Lily, I would like to speak with you. And Lily's like, uh, no, I'm talking to, to Nikki or she goes, you know what? I'm talking to Nikki. I'll see you out on the patio, right? Like, no, you're not just going to barge in. And so Nikki says, listen, I need to leave anyway. Billy, you can have my seat. You two can talk. So she tells Victor, she says, you know, Victor, um, this is Nikki when she meets up with Victor at the GCAC. She goes, oh, the tension you could cut like a knife with the, between those two. Lily didn't tell me what was going on, but every time I mentioned Billy's name, she would tense up. So she's not happy for some reason, reason something is going on. And when Billy came, he says, ooh, the tension between them. So Victor was like, mm, okay, okay. And as they're speaking, Lily calls Victor wanting to meet with him because Billy sits down and pretty much says, okay, so did you sign the severance paperwork? And Lily says, oh, I absolutely did not sign the severance paperwork, nor did I cash that severance check. Why not? Because I'm not going to cash it because I'm going to earn the check because I'm not going out like this, Billy. And he goes, she goes, Jill left me in charge of Chancellor for, a, Abbott Chancellor, Chancellor for a reason. And he goes, yeah. And then she made, put me in charge for a reason of Abbott Chancellor. And Lily says, and he goes, and you tried to stab me in the back. She goes, we're not going to go through that again. See, because Lily never admitted that to Billy. Billy just feels he knows that, right? Because he threw it in her face and she did not deny it. Well, she's not pretty much catering to his every whim, right? So anyway, um, she meets with Victor and she tells Victor that Billy fired her and he's going to run Catherine's company into the ground and it means too much to her she goes you know i have spent too many years making a uh, chancellor what it is you know today I've, I've done a very good job with this company and i've always had Catherine's wishes in mind with running this company i took it very very seriously i wanted to honor her and it's funny She's talking about Catherine, Catherine, when really she was trying to honor Jill because she worked for Jill. Let's be real, right? So anyway, she Victor's like, okay, so what would you like me to do? What do you, what's your end game? Like, what's your goal? And she goes, I would like you to help me get Chancellor back. And away from Billy she goes because I know you were just waiting for Billy to fail and then you were going to pick up the company you know for pennies on the dollar and he goes how do you know that she goes because of the conversation you had with Devon letting him know that Devon told her about the conversation so um he says okay let's say I get Chancellor back what's your goal she goes I want my old position restored to me so that I could continue to do good things with the company. And he just sitting back thinking, no, it's going to go to Nikki and then you could work for her. You see what I'm saying to me? And that's wrong. Nikki has never run chancellor. Catherine didn't leave her company to Nikki, right? 
she didn't leave it to Lily either, but Lily has proven herself at Chancellor. If you're going to do anything, Victor, make them co-CEOs, period. A hundred percent. Just like Lick, Lil, Nikki is automatically taking on this mentorship position for Lily. But that doesn't mean that that's in business. And it doesn't mean that that it, it, it equate, equates to what's happening at Chancellor and the knowledge Lily already has at Chancellor. Nikki has none. No experience at Chancellor. She never even stepped in at Chancellor when Catherine was off on her many misadventures. Right? So now, um, what else happened over the Sally? You know, poor Sally. She runs into Connor, Chelsea. Oh, she runs into Billy. And Billy's telling her, did you leave Adam? So did you leave him? See, uh-uh. You need to leave him because you're better than he is. You, you, you deserve better than Adam. And I'm thinking, see, there you go, Billy. There you go. But good. You got Billy telling Chelsea. You could do better than Billy Abbott. See, good. You both are trying to stab each other in the back. Good for both of you. So Sally says, I haven't made up my mind. And you talking to me is not going to make me make up my mind, Billy. I've got to get, I'm late for an appointment. So she's going through the park and she sees Connor and Chelsea and Adam at the park. And, you know, love having a family moment. Connor sees he had just brought ice cream back. He sees her and he goes, Chelsea, Sally. And so Sally comes over and she's nice. He's putting on a smiley face and Adam and Chelsea are kind of looking at her. But she did what Billy did for Connor. Put on that good face. Connor don't know. Connor is starting to pick up some tension between his parents and they're trying to play it off, right? Because every chance he walks away, Billy's like, I mean, Adam's like, you know, it's your fault. Sally left me. She goes, no, Sally left you because you lied and you wouldn't tell her the truth, Adam. Not because of me. Right. Good, Chelsea, because hey, come on, Adam. And he goes, I had her convinced. She finally was believing me. And Chelsea said, for how long do you really think that was going to go on? Just because you wanted to lie forever didn't mean I was going to. So how was that going to work, Adam? So anyway, uh, uh, Chelsea says she wants this latte from a truck that's a little further down. And Connor and Adam were going to go get it, even though Adam's like, well, we're getting ready to leave, Chelsea. You could just go with us and get it. She goes, no. I'm going to stay here. You guys go get it. And he's looking like, what are you going to say to Sally? So Chelsea's trying to talk to Sally about it. It was just a lapse. It was more, it meant nothing. What we did. How many times everybody, and just think about it. Even if you've been in this situation, how many times has the other woman been able to step in and tell the one that was cheated on to forgive her significant other, the cheater, and it worked. How many times has that worked? Because you're just as angry at the one that they cheated with, if not more, because you always want to blame the other one more than the one you was with, right? You don't want to hear from them saying it meant nothing and it'll never happen again and blah, blah, blah. And Sally looked at her. She goes, except it did happen again. This is not the first time you and Adam have cheated together on Billy. And she goes, Adam told you that? And he goes, no, Billy told me that. How is Billy? Oh, you know, really. Sally didn't entertain it too much. But Sal uh, Chelsea was just pleading with her, pleading with her. And she goes, you know what, Chelsea? I don't need you to tell me what to do. Uh, where Adam, my relationship with Adam is concerned. She goes, and you know what? Until just now, I had made up my mind but I've made up my mind as to what I'm going to do. And then Adam walks back up and Sally says something, you know, hopefully you'll be, you know, straight with Chelsea. Right. And she walks away and Chelsea's like, uh, what does she mean? What's that last thing she said about 
telling me, be being straight with me, telling me something. I don't know. Who knows what she meant? She meant that you, it has something to do with love for you, which it doesn't. I, I don't even know why he said yes. He's not in love with Chelsea. So we have the meeting that uh, Sally was late for was between Summer, Chloe, and Lauren. They're doing a a, a promotion with Finn Moore's. And um, Chloe was really carrying the meeting because Sally was late. So she was carrying it for her and Sally's in. And then when Sally came, she was distracted and Chloe would kind of jump in, you know, with some information. But towards the end of halfway through, Sally got her head in the game. They finished up. They had a great meeting. Um, and Chloe says, okay, now that they're gone, what's going on with you? Because this is not you. You don't show up late for meetings and you definitely, when you're here, you're not distracted the way you were. So Sally ends up telling her, Adam, we broke up. And Chloe's like, good. And Sally just looked at her. She goes, oops, I didn't mean that to blurt out like that. How are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, you did mean it to blurt out like that. Now be a friend versus somebody she don't want to confide in, right? So... Anyway, she's like, I don't really want to get into what he said. What did he do? She goes, I don't want to get into what he did because, you know, it's irrelevant. We need to work. We got deadlines on this line, on this promotion. So what I need is to have work to just dive my, you know, put my head down, dive into work and not think about what's going on with my life. And she goes, look, now... I have a lot of free time, so I could definitely put my put my heart and soul in this. So we'll see if Chloe lets it go with that. But that's it. Nothing else happened. Let's go to comment corner, comment corner. We got a few comments. Reflections of the Sunlight says, I'm right with you. I fast forward past Sharon and Cameron scenes as well. Summer's finally dropping the attitude with Claire. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts because Kyle and Claire are going to start dating. Yep. In the fall, according to official spoilers. Uh, did you see when Phyllis got Nick all worked up talking about he can't help Sharon? I know. And can't wave his magic wand and help her every time. I think she's jealous of the love that he still has for Sharon. Phyllis has always been jealous about that. Uh, she told him she didn't mean to get him upset. Yes, she did. Uh, she never means to get anyone upset, yet always manages to get someone upset. Great recap. That Phyllis does that on purpose. Uh, Reflections of the Sunlight says, I knew it. I knew Phyllis would get around to bringing up Sharon's name sooner than later. She said, Nick... Uh, How's the situation with Sharon's medication? What are the doctors saying? I know. I want uh, him to tell her so bad. It's none of your business, which he should have. But he said the doctors are sorting things out. Um, he had already confided in her before about Sharon struggling. Yeah, that's true. With her meds. And when she saw her one day at the coffee shop, she knew uh, she was very mean to Sharon. Wait coffee shop she was very mean to Sharon must be Phyllis uh Nick should have never told her anything he knows what she's doing yes he does and then she says well Mariah you're not by yourself all of us are worried about Sharon we all want her to get the help she needs and get better so that we can move on from this ridiculous storyline and then Denzel says Chad DeWall, uh, that plays as Mike Wan General Hospital, and Courtney Hope, that plays Sally on the boat in the beautiful, both dated in real life. They were engaged uh, on Valentine's Day, but they ended their relationship. They broke up after five or six years. Yeah, they were together for a long time. Uh, just to let you know, Daily Week, yeah, that's true. And then she and the actor playing Adam were definitely a thing once they put them together on um the young and the restless i mean they were both on each other's instagrams hugging up i even think she moved in with him or they moved in together 
they were hot and heavy there for a while. Um, and that's when Sally and Adam really had that spark. That's because the spark was on and off uh, the scene, um, on and off the screen. And then uh, Charletta says, it was Michael and Sally uh, where to get, wait, where to get her in real life. Yeah, Michael and Sally were together for years, but Sally was also with the actor playing Adam. Um, Because Michael and Chad broke up a long time. I mean, not Michael, Sally and Chad broke up a long time ago. The act Courtney and Chad broke up a long time ago. Um, Anita says the writers are sculpting Claire as a wet noodle. She is so blah, walking dead. Daniel and Heather need to face reality regarding Lucy. She needs uh, a lockdown, LOL. All right, that's it for Daily Recaps, Daily Re uh, for Comic Corner, Comic Quarter. I'll be back uh, for another Daily Recap of The Young and the Restless.